I don't have to motivate this team for this game. Are you kidding? This is the Super Bowl. This afternoon, we're going to play the biggest football game in the history of Western civilization. <laughs> if you can't get ready to play this game, you ought to take a hike. Sunday. It's not just a game. It's the most hyped event in the world. Super Bowl is bigger than life. Can you imagine if somebody didn't know what the Super Bowl was? Like, what planet are you on? Listen, the eagle has landed. Okay, but even Martians know not every Super Bowl is created equal. They should have called the game. There's nothing left but a pile of bones. We switched it over to the Simpsons. Bad. Very bad. You want there to be drama from the beginning of the game all the way until the end. High drama here in the Super Bowl. You have to have the Brady's or you have to have the Bradshaws. A brilliant throw by Bradshaw. Great players making great plays at opportune times. Oh, 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 oh. Five yard line. Gonna be great. But you also have to have the hero that nobody saw coming. Hot, hot. How in the world did he do that? While not everyone will agree with our list of top 10 Super Bowls, each contest lived up to the hype. What a finish to this Super Bowl. The number 10 Super Bowl of all time, Super Bowl III. This is what you people do. You come up with these lists. They make no sense. Super Bowl III, when Joe Willie name with guaranteed victory, blah, 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 blah. Our number 10 Super Bowl stirred up controversy. Some argued it was too sloppy to be a great game. Yeah, the game itself sucked. Man, we should have had three points that time, at least. Kind of dull. Hell, I'm sorry. We should have had some points up the board that time, please. If you look at it from a standpoint of the action, the game itself was a very boring game. Well, you can't please any everybody. People look back on it and they say it wasn't an exciting game. I thought it was. This wasn't a football game. This was history. There was a lot of fuss made about my guarantee and the victory. Thursday night before the game, Joe Namath not only predicts victory, he guarantees it. <laughs> Namath has not been bashful this week. He has said that the Jets are going to win. He doesn't even predict it. He said, I guarantee a Jet victory. And I, of course, pasted that up in the locker room, Namath's prediction, and tried to use that as motivation for our team. He was shooting his mouth off, and you know, who wouldn't? I mean, if you're an 18-point underdog, I'm going to say, yeah, we're going to come out there and whip your butt. We're going to win the game, I guarantee it. Super Bowl three had the unexpected. Most waited for Joe Namath to come out throwing, but the game featured his abilities as a play caller. He managed the game masterfully the way Bart Starr had been famous for managing games with the Packers. Jets inside the 10-yard line, hand off to Snell. He may go, and he's in there. Snell scores. The guy that won the game was Matt Snell. Matt Snell has been the outstanding runner so far. The Jets ran over them. Those running backs for the Jets did a great job. He may be sitting in one of Bart's greatest upsets in history. The Colts that game in the first 31 minutes had four turnovers and missed two field goals. And it is no good. They should have won that game going away. It was a, a, a day from hell. There were so many stupid little mistakes that just killed you. Intercepted by Jim Hudson. That's the fourth interception. What heightened the drama of our number 10 Super Bowl was the cameo of a hobbled Johnny U yeah. in the second half. I can understand people watching it at the time, expecting the moment when the Colts explode into the lead. And Baltimore finally gets on the scoreboard. And I think there was this uneasy feeling on the part of Jets fans that, yeah, we're ahead, but we're really not going to win this game. Intercepted. Andy Beverly downs it. Then all of a sudden, we're going to win this game. The game is over. The New York Jets are the world champions. 
I think what Namath and the Jets did that day really changed the course of football history. This was the football world turning on its axis. Our number 10 Super Bowl is a golden oldie. The AFL's first win made Super Sunday must-see TV. The biggest star in the game, and the biggest city in the game, orchestrates arguably the biggest upset in pro football history. Joe, you're king of the hill. No, we're king of the hill. It's not as exciting as maybe the other games on this list, but lest we forget what that game did for the sport, way too low. Way, way too low. Coming up, see which fantastic finish earned a spot on our list. Most of the time when we rate Super Bowls, we rate how they finish. To me, that was one of the most thrilling finishes in the, in the game's history. No one likes losing, especially on the game's biggest stage. This has just been a nightmare. We had four bites of that apple and still didn't swallow it. Nice going, Lennon. Nice going, baby. Nice going. Victory tastes sweeter when you can defeat your own brother. The number nine Super Bowl of all time, Super Bowl 47. Super Bowl 47 is famous as much for what went wrong as what went right on the field. We have a power outage here at the Superdome. Everybody remembers Super Bowl 47 as the night the lights went out in New Orleans. Super Bowl 47 was arguably one of the most interesting Super Bowls we've ever seen because it featured John Harbaugh, the coach of the Baltimore Ravens, going against his brother, Jim Harbaugh, the coach of the 49ers. How you doing? Good. Good, huh? Yeah. Ready, ready, ready to go? Yeah. This is the pinnacle of sibling rivalry. How about you? Be good today. Okay. Proud of you. Really proud of you. The battle of brothers began in the older Harbaugh's favor. The Ravens strike first in Super Bowl 47. The Ravens really dominate right from the word go. And so touchdown, yeah! Ravens! You just thought this is, uh, this is just one of those magical runs for this Flacco guy. I don't know where this came from. Joe Flacco is on his game. Hey, way to make plays, man. When Jacoby Jones started the second half with his kickoff return touchdown, All the way, Jacoby Jones! you felt like Baltimore was in total control of the game. There was nothing the 49ers were really doing that made you think, oh, they're coming back. Something big got to happen, man. Our number nine Super Bowl went from blowout to bizarre on the flip of a switch. Why is the clock stop? All of the lights on the 49ers side of the Superdome are out. There's a blackout in the Super Bowl? This has blacked into the surreal. Wow, when the lights went out, I was like, oh, it's the mercy rule. I was thinking, what do we do if they can't get the lights back on? It's starting to come up. Yeah, they've got the grid coming back action. up, yeah. We're now ready to resume action. The Ravens had done everything right up until the blackout. And then at that point, <laughs> looked like some JV squad went out there and took over their helmets. This is what the Ravens feared coming out of that mm -hmm. half-hour outage. Kaepernick legs strike again. At that point, any Ravens fan had to have their heart in their throat. We don't make it easy, I gotta tell you. Super Bowl 47 would come down to a controversial fourth down. Ball's thrown up to the end zone, incomplete. Really a no-chance play. 49ers all screaming for an interference call in the near corner. In the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, that's what you call incidental contact. Was there contact in holding? Yes. Is the referee going to throw that when the Super Bowl's on the line? No, he's not going to. The Baltimore Ravens are Super Bowl champions! Congratulations. Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Hey, you too. Good job. Proud of you. Yeah, I don't know if this needs to be on the list. Any Super Bowl that comes down to the final minute of a game, it's fourth down for a Super Bowl. It has to be in the top ten. We think about this game, we think about the blackout. Sometimes it's about coming this close. It has been incredibly torturous for the 49ers. Only to watch it slip away. That's one of the things that makes for a great Super Bowl. The number eight Super Bowl of all time, Super Bowl 13. <laughs> If you're talking about Super Bowls, isn't it hard not to have the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 70s on the list? There are 27 teams in pro football. And then there are the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
The Steelers and Cowboys were as popular in the 70s as funky hair and plaid slacks, winning four Super Bowls combined before Super Bowl 13. You talk about the Steelers and the Cowboys and which team was the team of the decade in the 70s. Well, that's where the rubber met the road. Maybe we are a team of destiny. I don't know. This is Super Bowl 13, and the Pittsburgh Steelers meet the Dallas Cowboys for the world title. You had two heavyweights going at it. Get after their own. It was an ebb and flow kind of game. You were not certain who was going to win. What a ball game this one's turning out to be, huh? I remember John Stallworth in that game more than anybody else. Stallworth is from Alabama, and down there, the locals say that he's like a blend of sipping whiskey and white lightning. Smooth, with a good, strong finishing kick. That game might be placed a little higher simply because of the talent level. We got the best offense, the best defense. There are 17, 18, 19, 20 of the finest players in the history of this league on the field at one time. Hard to beat. Hard to beat. In a Super Bowl loaded with big plays, the stunner was a drop that would have tied the game at 21. Jackie Smith. Poor Jackie Smith. Oh, bless his heart. He's got to be the sickest man in America. I still can't believe Jackie Smith didn't catch that ball. To this day, cannot believe it. Nobody's ever going to remember his Hall of Fame career as much as they're going to remember that drop. Jackie was so wide open in the end zone, it was incredible. Come on, Terry! The nation watched as quarterbacks Terry Bradshaw and Roger Staubach dueled to the finish. He was up in the air and made a circus catch. We're up 35 to 17. Nice lead. Out. In the press box there, you know, we're all packing our stuff up and heading downstairs. And all of a sudden we kind of hear, oh, the Cowboys scored a touchdown. Three to the five and in for the touchdown. You know, Stallback brought them back. And then everybody's scrambling to get a view of the field and saying, what happened? And all of a sudden the Cowboys scored another touchdown. Stallback hits the touchdown pass with 22 Pittsburgh then held off America's team in the final seconds for its third Super Bowl title. And all over Super Bowl 13, captured by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Super Bowl 13, I think, needs to be higher because when you think about what was going on in the Super Bowl era at that time, Gary Apprendi lost his head and tried to throw a pass. The games were low scoring, they weren't very exciting. No! What? And Super Bowl 13 was the first true shootout. You might go back and look at Super Bowl. They won't find a better than this one. Coming up, see which franchise established a dynasty and earned a spot on our list. That Super Bowl victory really cemented the legend and status as uh, becoming a dynasty. Some Super Bowl games haven't been so super. A terrible disappointment. The Super Bowl blowout used to be a time-honored tradition, like the post-game smooch and Gatorade bath. <laughs> John Madden's Raiders made Super Bowl XI a runaway. Old man Willie, he's going all the way! That wasn't a game. The Vikings were adamant at the end of the third quarter. Black 59 Razor! Black 59 Razor! Joe Montana's 49ers scored a record 55 points against the Broncos in Super Bowl 24. Just complete control of the offense. It's a clinic. That was a good time to serve your community because the Super Bowl lost its luster watching them fail. While this 49ers blowout was forgettable, our number seven Super Bowl was a San Francisco treat. The number seven Super Bowl of all time, Super Bowl 23. Super Bowl 23 actually should be higher than that because it was really the first truly great Super Bowl that lived up to the pregame hype. It broke that string of blowout after blowout after blowout after blowout in the 80s, and finally we had a competitive finish. We finally have a close game in the Super Bowl. You look at what the Giants did two years ago. You look at what the Steelers did last year. Those are the only two Super Bowls I'd put above Super Bowl 23. Super Bowl 23 means an awful lot to me. And what turned out to be Bill Walsh's final game, Super Bowl 23 saw the 49ers execute the West Coast offense to perfection. That's another great throw by Montana. Great throw. Great catch again by Rice. I wanted to finish my career with a Super Bowl victory. 
With the game tied at six late in the third quarter, Walsh's Super Bowl aspirations took a turn for the worse. People remember Joe Montana's performance on the game's final drive. They forget he almost threw the game away. Montana throws for the end zone. Intercepted. No, Rob. Holy mackerel. That was almost intercepted by Phillips. Missed opportunity. This is a missed opportunity for Lewis Phillips. Montana threw the ball right to a Bengal defender. Hit him right in the chest. I mean, right between the numbers. Had it right in his ears. You don't give Joe Montana second chances. Montana's path to redemption started on the very next play. Montana for right, got it out of bounds, and right at the touchdown, 49ers. It wasn't a great game. It was a great final drive. Down by three, the 49ers drive to victory is the reason Super Bowl 23 is on our list. Joe Montana, the technician, the surgeon, the conductor. A lot of people tell me to this day that they remember that Super Bowl because of the way that it ended and the excitement that was attached to it. Montana, steps up, throw, I think of the drive, you think of John Elway, but when I think of the drive, I think of Joe Montana beating the Bengals in Super Bowl 23. They went 92 yards and 11 plays. I think you guys are being a little generous to uh, 23. I, I, I don't know if it cracks the top 10. You guys are definitely rewarding a great finish, and by the way, it was a great finish. And also, perhaps one of the best games played. That Super Bowl victory really cemented Joe Montana's legend, the 49ers' uh, legend and status as uh, becoming a dynasty. The 49ers with three Super Bowl victories in the 1980s. Super Bowl 23. Everybody's thinking, final play goes to Jerry Rice. Touchdown, John Taylor. Great Super Bowl, because you never saw it coming. The number six Super Bowl of all time, Super Bowl 38. I think that the greatest Super Bowl the Patriots have ever played in was Super Bowl 38. Good evening, everyone, from Super Bowl 38. People sort of forget this game, but it had everything. It was a great game because no one expected the Panthers to play that well. They said we weren't supposed to be here. What the f are we here? People forget that 38, the first half, was a dog. Second half will be even exciting. Gonna be more exciting in the third half. It was a Super Bowl that started scoreless the longest, and then boom, an explosion of points. Throws it up for Steve Smith, and he's got it! Touchdown, Carolina! And that's what a Super Bowl is supposed to be about. Was physical, defensive, hard-hitting, grudge, old-time football. After a rough and physical first three quarters, the game's final 15 minutes were played at a much different pace. Love this game because it was two games. It was the one where it was just physically brutal. And then the lid just blew off and it turned into a track meet. At Big Springs, Texas, two great sprinters meet to settle a classic track rivalry. He was a track meet. One team going up, the other team going back. One team going up, the other team going back. 10, 5, Foster dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers! It's just who is going to have the ball last. The loan is ready. He's got the ball and back to throw. Looks, floats it in the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina! Ricky Kroll! 29 to 29. And of course, go figure. The Patriots had the ball last. On their last drive, the Patriots were kick-started by the Panthers. I'll never forget uh, John Casey kicking it out of bounds uh, before the Patriots game-winning drive. Oh, no. It was out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. John Casey can't believe what he just did. Probably one of the biggest mistakes in Super Bowl history. One kicker's mistake helped another atone for his. Super Bowl 38. First quarter, 31-yard kick, wide right. Adam looking for the first points of the game. Ball is down. Kick is up. Kick is no good. Later in the game, 36-yard kick, blocked. Kick is blocked, and the Panthers have stopped the Patriots again. That's the most pressure that you can ever ask for a kicker. When you had to have it, he got it. 
Kick up. Kick is on the way. Kick is good. You were on the edge of your seat. That was a great, great Super Bowl. I'm pretty sure I was at that game, and I don't even remember that Super Bowl. I think that game is vastly overrated. I, I don't even think it's top 10. Adam Vinatieri with the money on the table, bangs it through. It's the greatest football game I've ever been to in person. People will be writing that this may have been the best Super Bowl of all time. On my personal list, Super Bowl 38 is number one. Coming up, what Super Bowl caused the most outrage on our list? This is a joke, right? I'm being punked. I'm serious. I'm being punked by you. Time out! Time out! All right, Coach, calm down. We'll take a time out from our list to recap what we've seen so far. Time out! Time out. Number 10, Broadway Joe delivers on his guarantee. I never really felt that the Jets were in trouble in that game. Number 9, a Super Bowl blackout. The night the lights went out in New Orleans. Number eight, the Steelers grabbed their third ring of the 70s. That was probably as good a football game as I can truly remember. Number seven, the 49ers drive to glory. They went 92 yards. It was a great final drive. Number six, first half was a dog. From Super Bowl to Super Bowl lore. And now, the number five Super Bowl of all time, Super Bowl 25. Five. Too low. That was the greatest Super Bowl of them all. That game had it all. Scott Norwood. He can fire the shot heard round the world now. Back, spot, in the air. It's got the distance. It is. You mean to tell me that you invited me all the way back to Philadelphia to ask me about a lousy kicker? The Deacon is right. Super Bowl 25 was decided by Scott Norwood. But here's the kicker. The big winner was the U.S. of A. You remember the pregame ceremony with the onset of the Gulf War? People were crying. There were helicopters in the end zone. And then you throw in the game. That was an incredible game. National Football League at its very best here tonight. So the Bills are coming into this game, and they are flying. That offense was really difficult to defend with the hurry-up approach, with Jim Kelly, who had a huge arm and could make every throw. The Bills are in the Super Bowl! Former Super Bowl MVP Phil Simms missed the game due to injury, so an unknown named Jeff Hostetler would become the hero. In Super Bowl 25, the Giants got a safety. He should have been rendered unconscious and should have given up the ball. How he ever held on to the football was an enormous play because that kept them in the mix. Super Bowl 25 had a certain genius to it. David didn't stop Goliath. He kept him on the bench. Bill Parcells and Ron Earhart played clock ball. We're very predictable around here. Parcells looks over at Earhart and says three words. Shorten the game. Shorten the game. Shorten the game. Let's run the ball. Let's take time off the clock. Let's limit their possessions. Let's limit their snaps. The clock is running, and that's just the way the Giants want it. They made a couple of key third down conversions, a huge one, late in the game to Mark Ingram. He's got Ingram for maybe a first down. He'll try to the 20. Yes, he's got it. This team absolutely maximized its talent Touchdown. more than any team in Super Bowl history. Our number five Super Bowl had what every great game needs, the white-knuckle finish of a Hollywood blockbuster. It had everything you could want right down to the very end. Here we go with eight seconds to play. 47 yards, tough kick. That is a long way to kick a football. It's like a horror movie. You have to, you sort of have to look away, and every time you watch it, you think, what if he made it this time? High drama here in the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, just like a movie. Snap, spot, in the air. It's got the distance. It is. Never miss a stay on. I still thought that thing went through. <laughs> that one, to me, has to be number one. I don't know of a game that this really affected more people. What a finish to this Super Bowl. That was perfect. That was perfection. Still, I think... Pound for pound, moment for moment, the best Super Bowl ever played. Giants win! Giants win! The number four Super Bowl.
Super Bowl of all time. Super Bowl 32. Broncos Packers? This is a joke, right? I'm being punked. I'm serious. I'm being punked by you. No, we're not bunking out. John Elway's Broncos beat Brett Barr's Packers in a Super Bowl crowd pleaser. I was loving life because I had the greatest seats. Most of the big plays of the game were right in my face. My goodness! Oh, man! And the chick I was with was so hot that she kept getting on television. My goodness! Oh, man! Gotta love it. Gotta love it. That was a great Super Bowl. One thing that makes that game have lasting impact is the star power on that field. Two great teams playing the last one of the year. You had Brett Favre trying to win his second. World champion, Green Bay Packers. And you had another of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, John Elway. I'm proud of the fact that we got to three Super Bowls. I don't care if we won or lost. The Broncos were the perennial loser. They had lost all of the Super Bowls. And what a mistake by John Elway. John Elway was destined to be remembered, kind of like a Dan Marino, a guy who generates huge stats. But you never really get that championship. We're playing in Indianapolis coach right now. This team is not better than us. They're not even good. It sounds strange, but I probably remember Terrell Davis more than anything about that game, even though it was Elway's game. Elway, Davis, same play, Davis to the end zone, touchdown, Denver! Truth was stranger than fiction in Super Bowl 32. The Broncos still used Terrell Davis while he was blinded by a migraine. I think Davis may be shaken up. This would be costly for the Broncos. Hey, okay, just do this. You don't worry about seeing on this place because we're going to fake it to you, the 15 lead. But if you're not in there, they won't believe we're going to run, okay? Terrell got to the huddle. He says, hey, I can't see it. I said, well, just go to the left and just run straight ahead, and I'll adjust to you. Vintage John Elway, the 37-year-old, making it happen with his legs. Come on, John, come on. Come on. Our number four Super Bowl showed old-timers everywhere that all it takes is desire to spin back the clock. He dies oh, inside the five-yard line. A gain of eight. He wanted that first down. He was just such a tough guy with that hit and the helicopter landing and the pain that probably ensued for days thereafter. You want to tell me the 37-year-old man doesn't want to win this game? Man, oh man. That one play really speaks to the fact that John Elway always was about doing anything he could to win. To that point in time, the NFC had absolutely owned the AFC. Yes, William Perry has scored the Super Bowl! It was a decade and a half of us knowing exactly what conference was going to win the Super Bowl. That's not fun. What it's all about. Have a little fun. The game was a thriller in the final two minutes, with a two-minute maestro calling the shots. Davis, into the end zone, walking, standing up! Super Bowl 32 saw the AFC's 13-game losing streak come to an end and a legend get his ring. The Broncos have done it! John Elway was towards the end of his career and he thought, man, he's never going to get it done, and then he did. You know how, you know how good that nice that ring's going to look on your finger? Super Bowl 32 being on the top of all time, I wouldn't even put it in my top 30. I don't know if it ranked that highly. I think the John Elway factor. The, this one's for John. This one's for John. You know, that is what people remember about that. I think it's in a good spot because of that moment and because it had an unexpected outcome. I think it is a very memorable game. Coming up, find out which player single-handedly earned his team a spot on our ranking. This is all about, baby. You have to have the guys nobody expected doing what they did to come up and make a play. Leaving certain games off this list really angered our panelists. How does Super Bowl V not make the list? The world championship of professional football would be settled in one final play. That was the only thrilling finish that we saw in the first 15 years of the Super Bowl era. The kick is up and is long enough in here. But there was another omission that caused even more of an outcry. Are you serious? I'll let you guys figure it out. Which game do you think you're missing? Are you kidding? The Titans and the Rams. This is a joke, right? The fact that the tackle isn't on this list is completely ridiculous. Throws right side for Dyson. He dives for the end zone. No, he falls at the one. 
This is crazy. It was the greatest Super Bowl ever played, and we can't even make this list. He came up one yard short. The one the Rams lost is on this list, but Super Bowl 34 is not. The number three Super Bowl of all time. Super Bowl 49. Best finish I, I've ever seen. I feel pretty strongly that Super Bowl 49 should be number one on the list. A whole season couldn't have more twists and turns than this game did. Katy Perry coming out on a lion? That was ridiculous. I could watch Super Bowl 49 again just for Richard Sherman's face on the Malcolm Butler interception. Our number three Super Bowl featured two of the most evenly matched teams on our list. Super Bowl 49, start to finish, it's a pretty compelling ball game. Brady was sensational in that game, and they had the perfect game plan. Don't test Sherman and Maxwell on the outside. Stay underneath and use the middle of the field. He lobs it to the right side for Gronkowski. Has a step, has a touchdown! Patriots! But then, at the back end of the second quarter, suddenly the game takes on a different light. A gutsy call on the final play of the first half swung the momentum for Seattle. The Seahawks all the way down the field in 30 seconds. Seattle takes the lead in the third quarter. Touchdown, Seahawks! Uh-oh, Tom Brady. Where's the Brady magic? Hey, we've been in worse situations than this, huh? Super Bowl 49 lands at number three on our list because of arguably the most compelling fourth quarter in Super Bowl history. Big championship drive, that's what we need. Brady has the signature Tom Brady fourth quarter. Touchdown New England! 11 of 14, two touchdowns. They're back in the lead! That to me is the signature quarter of his career. In the final two minutes, Tom Brady would have to overcome the ghost of Super Bowl's past. Russell's going to lay it up over the top this time. Curse reaching up. Ball slapped. He, he caught it! He fell into the dark! He caught it! He caught it! He caught the ball! When you see that, you can't help but go, it's happening to Brady again. How many different plays are the Patriots going to have like this? Mario Manningham, David Tyree, right, this was and now a curse. The Seahawks were going to punch it in, and Tom Brady was going to lose another game. It was the third time it was going to happen. He's got to make a play. Russell Wilson extends the hands he has. Pass. Wilson, quick throw, and it's still intercepted. Intercepted to That was a play to win the Super Bowl. What happened? And they got cute, and they lose the Super Bowl. Everybody knew they shouldn't throw the ball there, except for Pete Carroll. You've got a guy that's been borderline unstoppable in this part of the field. I can't believe the call. Oh, the touchdown. He, he, he had him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. When Pete Carroll throws his headset off and goes, oh, no. Oh, no. I could watch that over and over again. And the New England Patriots are on to a celebration. This has to be on the list. That was an incredible game. Oh, my God! We the energy! And it's got the single most influential play in Super Bowl history. That pick changed a game where the Seahawks were almost certain winners, certain losers. And there's no play like it in the history of, of the Super Bowl. There are only two spots left. Stay tuned to see which of these three Super Bowls didn't make the cut. What a throw! What a catch! What a game! Nothing makes for a better Super Bowl game than to see a quarterback finally win the big one. Come on, Lenny. Pump it in there, baby. When Dawson atoned for a Super Bowl one loss by matriculating the Chiefs to victory in Super Bowl IV. Are the world we did it. A big old weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Someone take the monkey off my back. Steve Young tamed an 800-pound gorilla by breaking Joe Montana's touchdown record in Super Bowl 29. Six touchdown passes. Steve would do something Joe never did. He needed that validation. Well, every one of you guys win this championship home tonight. In Super Bowl 41, not even the rain dampened Peyton Manning's long-awaited victory parade. The Colts are world champions! There's some relief in the fact that I don't have to answer those questions anymore. While Peyton missed the cut, his brother Eli's first Super Bowl is next on our list. Two, two, the number 
42 Super Bowl of all time. Super Bowl 42. Number two? That has to be number one. And the Giants with the most improbable win have won Super Bowl 42. Oh, I hated that one. That should be number 42. The Patriots seeing their undefeated season go up in smoke. Now, if the Patriots lost a game or two, okay, I could put it down on the list. But since they were trying to beat Miami, be the second team to go undefeated. 17-0 says it all. It puts a whole different element to the game. Beat them, man. Just the way you did it, too. 18-1. Our number two Super Bowl show that sometimes the underdog can have one nasty bite. Sacked by Michael Strahan. No one came close to doing what the Giants defensive front did to Brady and the Patriots in Super Bowl 42. Patriots have not been a game this low scoring all year long. Anybody who thinks that Tom Brady isn't tough just needs to flip on the DVR of that game and watch some of the thrashing hits that he took. Jay Alford got in there. Throughout the game you're going, wow. Bill Noah's playing the perfect game. It can't go on like this. You have to play perfect to beat the perfect team. And all of a sudden, the clock's ticking off, and we're going, geez, they're really playing the perfect game. And so the 18-0 season continues to hang very much in the balance. The Patriots uh, are going to have to show us the stuff of champions here. They still had the champion's heart, New England, to take it down the field and seemingly win the game. Touchdown! except that a young quarterback came of age in the last two and a half minutes. This is what every quarterback lives for. Can Eli Manning do it? Super Bowl 42 had a miracle finish, thanks to Eli Manning and backup receiver David Tyree. Third and five for the Giants. 116 to go. It defies all logic. To me, it's the greatest play in Super Bowl history because it actually has two parts. Boyd for Ross, and he's going to fight out of it. Still fights out of it. How did he get away from that? Now throws it deep downfield, wide open Tyree, who makes the catch. What a play by the quarterback. And what a catch by Tyree with 58 seconds to go. I was amazed, number one, how he got out of the grasp of the sack. How in the world did he do that? And then even amazed more when I saw Tyree make the catch on the top of his helmet. Caught! Caught! That right there let me know we're going to win this game. 14, fellas. One touchdown, we are world champions. The game proved nobody but the 72 Dolphins are perfect, with Manning throwing the game-winning touchdown pass. The New York Giants have knocked off the New England Patriots, 17-14. If the Patriots had come back after the Plaxico touchdown, there would be no debate on who the greatest quarterback of all time was. There would be no debate on what the greatest team of all time was. The Patriots will not be perfect. I thought it was a very exciting game, but not the best Super Bowl I've ever seen. Hey, this is very stuff. Only God kind of stuff. So you're telling me you have the greatest catch in Super Bowl history. I am still flabbergasted. Along with an undefeated season on the line and a last second win, and that's number two. Read all about it, baby. Big two. End of discussion. There is no better Super Bowl than Super Bowl 42. Coming up, which Super Bowl is truly number one on our list? That is the number one Super Bowl of all time. It had everything. No, no, no. Not Superman. Super Bowls. Let's recap our list. Number 10, the Jets soar to a title. The New York Jets are the world champions. We did it. We did it. Number nine. Why the clock stop? Lights out. Game on. It's fourth down for a Super Bowl. Such a weird game. Number eight. Poor Jackie Smith. He's got to be the sickest man in America. Number seven. The 49ers establish a dynasty. It was really the first truly great Super Bowl. Number six. Vinatieri does it again. Vinatieri bangs it through. I think that's underrated. Number five, wide right. No Super Bowl 25 was a great football game. Number four, the Broncos buck their losing trend. This one for John. Number three, the Patriots take off a Seahawks win. Pete Carroll throws his headset off and goes, oh no, oh no. Number two, perfection no more. 
New York Giants have knocked off the New England Patriots. Number two, that has to be number one. And now, the number one Super Bowl of all time, Super Bowl 43. I have never, ever been more entertained watching a Super Bowl than I was that day. While we rank Super Bowl 43 as the best ever, not everyone agrees. I put it in the top 10. I, I can't put it number one. It had a lot of huge plays, but the best Super Bowl of all time? This is a classic case of our memories are really short these days. Really short. What a finish to an unbelievable Super Bowl. No, it's not sexy because it was the Arizona Cardinals. When nobody else believed in us, you guys did. And we're going to the Super Bowl. You throw the Arizona uniform out and just look at the aesthetics of that game, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better Super Bowl. Super Bowl 43 is underway. After a slow first 15 minutes, Pittsburgh and Arizona's second quarter scoring spree started this game on its path to greatness. Oh, touchdown! And then James Harrison closed the first half of our number one game with one of the greatest plays in Super Bowl history. They're back. He throws the pass up. It's going to be picked up. James Harrison has it. He's running up the sideline. An amazing play by James Harrison. 25, 30, 35, 40. Still on his feet at the 45. And down. Now he's coming on his feet. Here comes Harrison. Jump over people. To the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. And that's a touchdown for Pittsburgh. James Harrison, Defensive Player of the Year. And you have Larry Fitzgerald tracking him down, running through the sidelines, bumping through coaches, and force a dramatic play at the end. That interception return for a touchdown was one of the memorable moments in Super Bowl history. In the fourth quarter, Larry Fitzgerald's record-breaking postseason continued. Water fires up the middle of the fence, caught the 45. Larry Fitzgerald breaking everything in sight. You gotta be kidding me! Larry Fitzgerald exploded past everybody, and that was the moment when people thought, this Cardinal team, they're actually going to win this game. The Cardinals lead Super Bowl 43. When Larry got that ball and took it all the way to Larry land, my two thoughts were, well, great for Larry, and now Ben can go and win it. Time to be great. Time to be great. The Steelers were great on the game's final drive. Santonio to the 10. Santonio tackle at the five yard line. Ben gets the snap. He's back. He pops. Scrambles around. Throws it back corner of the end zone. Santonio with a touchdown. Great catch by Santonio Holmes. I don't know how he did it. Santonio Holmes with that amazing catch in the end zone. What a throw. What a catch. That Santonio Holmes touchdown and the remarkable quality and the athleticism on the catch by Holmes, that really just stamps it that is the number one Super Bowl of all time it had everything Do you have something to say too <laughs> he's speechless <laughs> loved it no problem with Pittsburgh versus Arizona being number one on this list that's how you be great that's how you be great if you're a football fan the hairs on your arm were standing up throughout the entire game what a throw what a catch what a I don't think there were nine Super Bowls. I don't think there were five Super Bowls. I don't think there were three Super Bowls better than what we saw in Super Bowl 43. Now that the list is complete, opinions have been flying in about what people really think of our ranking. Terrible job out of you guys. You're terrible. Stupid. Uh, stupid. You're so dumb. How do you vote for this stuff? I mean, who, who do you have? I mean, do you use Price Waterhouse for this stuff? There's been better games before 2008. I'm done. Can I go now?